The drumbeats of war are getting louder in Ukraine. America says invasion is imminent. Russia could strike any moment. But the European partners are more skeptical. They're still betting on diplomacy. It's just like last week. The crisis is taking dual tracks, diplomacy and deterrence. Let's talk about diplomacy first. On Saturday, U.S. President Joe Biden spoke to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Putin had more complaints. Biden had more warnings. In the end, there was no breakthrough. The next day, Biden dialed Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky. He briefed him on the Putin phone call. What happened next is interesting. Kiev says Zelensky invited Biden to Ukraine, sort of like a morale booster. Washington, though, made no mention of this invite. They completely ignored it. And you can understand why. The United States is drumming up panic. Their media says Russia will invade this Wednesday. The White House says it's just a matter of time. Said before, we are in the window when an invasion could begin at any time, should Vladimir Putin decide to order it. I will not comment on the details of our intelligence information, but I do want to be clear. It could begin during the Olympics. Why has America turned alarmist? Maybe they haven't. Maybe this is all part of Western propaganda, pressurized Putin to show his hand. Whatever the reason, panic is now spreading. Around a dozen nations are asking their citizens to leave Ukraine. This includes Britain, Germany, Italy, Canada, Australia and Japan. Airlines are also avoiding Ukraine. Dutch, uh, Dutch carrier KLM has cancelled flights to Kiev. Germany's Lufthansa is considering the same. And these are not good signs for Ukraine. Foreigners fleeing your country, flights avoiding your airspace. All of this usually means only one thing. War is imminent. But Ukraine wants to keep the morale high. They're not buying America's panic, which is why Zelensky invited Biden to Kiev. It would have sent a strong message to Putin. Instead, another Western leader landed in Kiev today. And let me add, not a popular one. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz. His reluctance to take on Russia has enraged Ukrainians. He's refused to send military aid. He's non-committal on cancelling Nord Stream 2, the gas pipeline. So this visit was always going to be tough. Scholz had to prove himself to two groups, to his Western partners and to the Ukrainian people. Their anger was perfectly summed up by this tweet. It was written by Ukraine's envoy to Germany. The title is perfect. German hypocrisy, he says. Berlin exports goods worth 366 million euros to Russia, but they have given zero military aid for Ukraine, unless you count the helmets. How does Scholz plan to change this dynamic? With the same broken record, sanctions. It's necessary to be clear, to say clearly that in the case of military aggression against Ukraine, that endangers its territorial integrity and sovereignty, will result in hard reactions and sanctions that we have carefully prepared and that we can put into effect immediately, together with our allies in Europe and NATO. With allies like Germany, you have no option but to prepare for war. And that's what Ukraine is doing. President Zelensky has reiterated his bid to join the NATO. He says it is the only way Ukraine can secure itself. Germany, on the other hand, wants talks. Chancellor Scholz says he's willing to discuss European security with Vladimir Putin. That's where he's heading next, to Moscow. On Sunday, a new shipment of military aid arrived in Kiev. Guess what's inside those boxes? Stinger anti-aircraft missiles. It's an insurgent staple. You can take out enemy jets with precision. Stingers have changed the tide in many wars. The best example is Afghanistan, a country many Ukrainians talk about nowadays. They think the situations are similar. In Afghanistan, the army outnumbered the Taliban. The army had better weapons than the Taliban. Same in Ukraine. Russia has more soldiers. Russia has better weapons. But if the disorganized Taliban could beat the U.S.-backed army, surely Ukraine's army can beat the Russians. That's what people in Kiev say. They're bullish. But it's a tall ask, frankly. Across the border, the Russian war machine continues to mobilize. In Belarus, the military drills are expanding. Russian and Belarusian fighter jets were patrolling the skies. Down below, tanks conducted firing drills. So ground and air covered. What about the waters? That's happening further south. Russian warships have already reached Crimea. On Sunday, a Russian submarine also arrived. Put together, around 30 Russian vessels are parked in the Black Sea. Enough for a full-scale naval blockade. Despite all of this build-up, all this posturing, Russia continues to deny any plan to invade. So Kiev is asking for clarity. 
and they have triggered a special European security pact. It's called the OSCE, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, OSCE. Russia has also signed this pact. It's a signatory. The OSCE has a special clause on clarity. Suppose a European country is moving its troops or conducting military drills. Other nations can demand answers. Basically, they can ask them, what are you up to? And Ukraine has now triggered this clause. They want a meeting with Russia within 48 hours, but Moscow has refused to attend. This conflict is not just playing out in Ukraine, by the way. It's also playing out in the, at the United Nations. It's playing out at the Olympics. It will also play out at the Munich Security Conference this week. They call it Davos for Defense. It's being held since 1963, but this year Russia is not participating. At the Olympics, all the controversy is about this athlete, Russian figure skater Kamil Valieva. Before the Games began, she submitted her samples for testing, but the results came out only on the 8th of February after she had completed her event. It turned out that she had failed the dope test. A court of arbitration was hastily put together and Valieva was cleared to compete. Why wasn't she disqualified? Because she's a minor. The United States has expressed disappointment over the verdict. They're planning legal action themselves. Now, on the face of it, this is a totally unrelated incident, a military buildup near Ukraine and a doping scandal in Beijing. But that's how Cold Wars work, you see. There's no fighting on the ground. So the rivalry has to play out somewhere. It plays out in culture, in politics, sports, movies. Even if the standoff is resolved, the animosity between the West and Russia is here to stay. Vion is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.